good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out ember moon on frustrations with wwe creative man uh this is going to be an interesting one because uh ember moon in my opinion was someone i was really looking forward to like actually doing like like prospering on the main roster like she did on nxt on nxt she was fantastic i love what they were doing with her when she came up to the main roster i'm like hey man she she should be the next next star in the women's division and she was plagued with injuries and then wwe it didn't seem like she captured the momentum that she had from nxt then they brought her back down to nxt and I, I don't know, man. It just I felt I felt like they didn't really utilize Ember Moon to her max maximum potential. I, I don't think they really, in my opinion, from what I could tell, outside of the injuries and stuff, I don't think they really realized what they had in a in a talented women's wrestler. Like Ember Moon, she can go, you know what I'm saying? And and people definitely was liking her character in the ring so i'm not sure you know what went wrong but maybe she will explain what was some of the issues she was dealing with but appreciate all the love and support man uh let's get right into this and i'm very excited to see what she has to say we're starting to feel like you you weren't loving it you weren't having fun anymore do you feel like in a way it became full circle after you get signed that there was a point where you're like this isn't as fun as i thought it was gonna be Ooh, oh oh yes and i mm, okay we're gonna talk about it i i feel like i feel like i feel like i need to talk about it just to get it off my chest and to get it out there in the universe because my last four months was just one of those moments that i wasn't having fun anymore and it started with shotzi being gone and shotzi being drafted and i remember like thinking like I was sitting at home and I got a phone call saying, hey, we don't want you to be upset, uh, but Shotzi just got moved to SmackDown and she is debuting with Tegan Knox as a tag team. And I just was sitting there Damn. and I was like, I was playing D&D, &D, the, mo the most beautiful day of my week. And I'm getting this phone call <laughs> about how Shotzi's been drafted. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy for her. And then like the tag team thing popped out and I was like, but we're the tag team and we have merch and we're doing fun mm -hmm. things and we had just finally gotten into our groove of the banter and it was just like but they're like don't worry we have stuff for you when someone says don't worry you probably should already be worrying and i was like okay cool cool and i remember like going to hunter and hunter was just like i have no clue what's happening we'll figure it out together see and this is what a lot of people in the wrestling community i think a lot of us kind of had a feeling triple h didn't really have no idea when it came to what they were going to do with them on the main roster for the most part like triple h did all he could to like help cultivate them to who they are for you know the the wwe brand but vince ultimately has ultimate say so in anything related to wwe at at this point well he always has for the most part so when it comes to vince and you know what they feel like uh, you know what vince feel like the character should be and how they should be presented on the main roster triple h doesn't really have much say so and control as much as we would want it to be you would think it would just be a simple nxt main roster keep them the same for the most part maybe switch up tweak stuff here and there but you don't really have to do too much and Vince be like nah we gotta change this we gotta change this we gotta do this we gotta you know we gotta nah we gotta switch it up you know what i'm saying so i don't know man it, it just it just sucks because triple h he did a lot of great for nxt but you don't see much of it on the main roster you rarely see any of the greatness he had in nxt 
you don't see that transfer into the main roster. And like that was like so much of what I needed at that time because no one really knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. You know, Bailey had gotten injured and they, uh, I know Shotzi and Tegan were going to do dark matches for a tryout anyway, you know, and they were like, well, we already had these girls here. Let's throw them out there. But the problem I had was kind of like some of the newer writers were like coming from Raw, coming from SmackDown. We had no idea you and Shotzi were a tag team and like just, Sitting there and just a lot of how WWE backstage is having to play the game mm. of like, oh, yeah, man, it's cool. We get it. We're down here at NXT. It wasn't like we weren't front page of dot com or anything when we won the titles, but that's fine. Yes, that doesn't bro. come on. I don't. And here's the other thing. I, I think I talked about it uh in my recent video, I'm not sure what video I talked about it on, when I was talking about sometimes Vince needs to let the writers kind of breathe and let them come up with some creative stories and kind of roll with their ideas since he hired them. But then also they need to hire people that actually give a damn about wrestling and the integrity of wrestling in the actual business because you, you can't care about WWE if you didn't know they were champs. You can't care. Well, not that much. Like, you got to be willing, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a mess sometimes with WWE and their booking and their, their creative team. You, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you're just having to, uh, I guess, eat the shit sandwich and smile with shit in your teeth a lot of the times Damn. because it's all about not making waves and it's just like okay yeah it's fine cool yeah i bet you didn't know we were a tag team look at shop look at this you know and it's just like okay cool and it was like you know me and hunter and uh, the head writer at the time we had all came up with we're gonna do a heel turn for me because that's okay. something new that's something different and during this process that. we wanted to do like a losing streak and, or at least that was my thought is let me do the losing streak i see all these new faces coming through here my part of my job at nxt was to help new talent on tv you know which i which i get that you know i've been around for a very long time or like and i've been doing this what like 16 17 years at this point in time yeah. you know and it was like you know and i and i love this business so much that i didn't mind i was like hey let me go on a losing streak let me get super frustrated and i let like me turn. that Okay. Right. That sounds, yeah. sounds pretty remember, cool. Something different okay, for her character. This is a great idea. We got A, B, C, D, F. We're going to do your first feud with this person or this person. And then the first match happens, and then I'm off TV for four weeks. What the fuck? And then I'm like, okay. They're like, don't worry. We got this. We got this. Then, like, Hunter disappeared. Oh. Uh, and then I was supposed to do a match with the Once Hunter disappeared, it wasn't much. It wasn't much. <laughs> I'm telling you, it, it, it wasn't much. Even, you know, despite his, you know, serious illness, you know, serious medical situation he was dealing with. Once Vince got involved, it was raps. It was definitely raps for like some of your, the OG, the black and gold <laughs> NXT crew. Uh, Saray. And I ended up getting a rash on my arm oh, damn. and I had an allergic reaction to something that they thought was something else. So they pulled me from the match and I was like, okay, cool, whatever. That's fine. All right. We're going to keep trucking. They're like, Hey, we'll do this match next week. And then another three weeks later, they're like, Hey, we're going to do this match. That match gets pulled from TV. And then, you know, one of damn. the head coaches goes, Hey, will you do me a favor and work 205 live? with Cora Jade. We really like her. She's a sweet girl. We really think this would be a fun match. You two are in the main event of 205. And I was like, okay, cool. That sounds great. Like I'm never going to say no to having a match on TV, regardless of where it's airing or whatever like that. And me and Cora go out there and we have just a fun banger of a match. And they're like, yeah, you got it. And they go, you're turning in this match, but we want to make it subtle. Right. So they kind of turn me, <laughs> but they don't. Oh and then gosh. there was like a lot of, I don't know confusion on what was supposed to happen and then some kind of way I remember going online to be like did did Ember turn heel did she and like that I was like I don't know if I turned heel or not you know oh. and then off tv for three weeks and I have the Jeez. match with Mandy and they're like we're we're finally pulling the trigger on this and I get a note that week saying hey in two weeks we need you to dye your hair fire colored again 
uh, we need you to get the red contacts. Mm. You're going back to the old Ember Moon character. That's just, this is Pervents. And we want you, to, you're going to turn heel, but you're going to turn heel as your old character. We're trying to get the old music and all that stuff together. And I was like, all right, great. This is great. So I go home, get my bottle of whiskey. I'm <laughs> dying this hair because I have to hand dive at myself. It takes an astronomical amount of time. Damn. You do it all yourself? Wow. Yes, I dye my uh, hair extensions. That fire colored ombre takes a minimum of eight hours. God <sighs> damn. Oh my God. It is, it is extremely tedious. And like, mind you, during COVID, my dye supplier actually shut down. So I'm having to find different colors and I'm spending a fortune on this hair. And two weeks later, I show up to TV. I'm, I'm like super motivated. I'm yeah. happy. And I'm like, okay, it's finally looking up for me. You know, just wait it out, just wait it out. And I remember um, Ryan Katz and I went and filmed like a kind of demo of kind of the vibe that I wanted. And I was yeah. like, and he's like, this could be awesome. Da, da, da. Yeah. Come back. I, I get the video ready. I'm ready to show everyone after TVs. And they go, hey, we got some bad news. Oh, no. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? I just, I got this video. No, um, Vince is pulling you off TV indefinitely. What? And I just kind of sat there and I was just like. What? What did I do wrong? What what the fuck? Why? And he's like, you did nothing wrong. And I was like, Damn. I have done everything that you guys have asked me. I have gone over and the What in the hell? What type of someone explain to me the logic? You tell them, hey, do this. We're going with the old gimmick. You're about to be a heel. She's excited. I'm thinking a lot of us fans would be like, holy shit, the old Emma Moon is back with the with the hair and the music. She's a heel now. Let's get this going. Just to Show up and be like, ah, nah, we're pulling you from TV indefinitely. Why? What did I do? What the? Fuck. Like, I can't express to you, like, when they put me and Shotzi in a tag team, everyone knows, everyone backstage knew, like, I'm not a tag team person. I hate tag teams because there's just too many moving parts. And it's not that I hate tag team wrestling. It's just that it requires so much mm -hmm. more to give Yeah. versus relying just on yourself for that you have yeah. to rely on like three other people in the ring to make sure everything's on point which is fun and i feel like me and shotzi capitalized on it and we were just so motivated it, within that tag team to build a division and then we weren't able to um but like me showing up to that tvs and it's like 2 a.m and i just remember sitting there and i was like i've done everything you guys have asked me to i've done over and beyond i've branched out i've Sorry, I'm getting emotional about it. Uh, I'm trying not to, but when I understand. Like, this is the dream job, especially yeah, like someone you... who's a wrestling fan, like mm -hmm. lifelong wrestling fan. And when you, uh, oh. uh, when you care about something and you care about this business so much more, not just for yourself, but for everyone oh, involved, yeah. it hurts so much more because for so many years Damn. I've been not about myself if that makes oh, sense bro, i've been is... for the match for the other people and to be told that i have done nothing wrong and i was taken off tv for doing absolutely yeah. nothing wrong it hurt so bad because i was so happy walking into work and oh, i remember what shotzi man. left i remember going to my makeup artist and going i'm so unhappy I'm so unhappy and we'd have to sit through stupid meetings about how we would have to dress sexy. And I remember looking at someone, I was like, no, <laughs> I cater to children. <laughs> I am not about to wear fishnet booty, butt cheek shorts because we had a two hour meeting about how to dress like Mandy Rose. Damn. That's not fair. Not everyone is going to be Mandy. Mandy is absolutely phenomenal and she is an amazing person, but not everyone is Mandy Rose. And that's like, I, I started seeing this downslope as soon as Hunter was gone. And like for the oh. first little bit, we didn't know why he was gone. We just knew he wasn't there, you know? Oh. And so it became this, like, I got so angry. And Bro, we don't, we got to put respect on Triple H's name because he did all he could to make NXT what it was, bro. Oh man. Duh, this is this is heartbreaking. Holy And I remember sitting there and I was like, I did nothing wrong. I didn't piss off Vince. I didn't I said you take shots away from me. Now Hunter's gone. You know, and I said, like, you guys promised me this wouldn't happen. 
you guys promised I wouldn't be lost in the shuffle. And I said, I went on this losing streak to help you guys out, to help build other talent so I could get a reward. And they were like, well, don't, not everything's lost, Timber. You know, we still want you to come and help out the next generation, maybe teach a class, uh, maybe, you know, do some PC lives, which is the student show in front of no fans. And wow. I'm just like, so you're taking me off TV and you're trying to make me a coach. <laughs> And I just remember like laughing and I was like, you know what? I said, if I've done nothing wrong, I said, you can cancel all my flights. I said, I'm not coming to help these people that do not care about what I do. They only care about the paycheck that hits their bank account. They're not passionate like me. I'm not going to come up here and help these people that don't care about what we do when there's no benefit for me. Yeah. When I've done nothing wrong, when I've given you my entire right side of my body <laughs> between my elbow surgery and my Achilles surgery, Jesus. I've given you this entire side for, for no reward, not even a thank you. And like, you want me to coach, you want to take me out TV to come coach. And I just, I remember just like sitting there a moment and I got teary. I just like that. And he's like, are you okay? I go, no, I'm not. Okay. I said, this is what you can do. I said, I'm not coming up here to coach. I said, I'm not coming up here to do your PC shows. I said, I was supposed to come to NXT to repackage and then go back up to main roster. That was supposed to be within the year, but yet I'm still here. You took Shotzi away from me. I said, I have nothing to go off of. I said, so I'm going home. I said, cancel all my flights, cancel all my hotels. I said, if you have a flight there and you have no creative for me, I'm not getting on the flight. I said, I'm not doing this anymore because I am going to snap and it's either going to be on you or it's going to be on a talent. So I Damn. am going to go home. And I said, you leave me there till you have something for me. And I said, and even then I said, I need to approve the creative before I hop on the flight. Mm. And it's the first time I've ever pulled this card. And I remember thinking, I think I just quit. Yeah. <laughs> the entire time I was like, Oh, buddy, for three months, you've been saying like, yeah, I think I'm going to quit today. Yeah, I'm going to quit today. And, and then I actually did. Pretty I much think. Quit. And I remember just kind of getting real small and quiet. And like, I was yelling. I was yelling because I was so angry. And I remember one of my last promos <laughs> that I ever cut on the indies just kind of flashed in my head is that like, well, you know, I hope I don't come back here. But if I do, we all know it's because of my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> And I remember that flashing in my head and I just kind of laughed to myself and I was kind of crying and I had gotten a couple of, I, I, the worst part about this is that on some level, I knew that I was leaving. I had already gone and bought an extra bag and kept it in the locker room oh, so I could pack all my stuff and leave. Like it had been there for like a month and I was just like, I'm so unhappy. Oh. Like I, I see where this is going between yeah. the booty butt cheek shorts meeting and like them telling girls to alter their gear to make it more revealing and Damn. some people were very uncomfortable with that and they were like nope this is what they want you got to do it it didn't matter how that person felt and i was like yeah. this isn't what i signed up for anymore this isn't about the wrestling this isn't hmm. about the art that we create in the ring this is turning into everything that i left on ron smackdown Mm -hmm. And you could just see it. The pity parties started forming in the locker rooms. And that's crazy. Literally, when that when Vince took over and they came up with NXT 2.0, that pretty much was it, bro. They literally wanted to it want they wanted it to be Raw and SmackDown. Like, are there some good things on the show? Yeah, there are some good things on the show. Granted, I stopped watching it. I just I just because it's Monday Night Raw light. It's SmackDown light. Like Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, there's a few cool segments and everything else is kind of just, it's like a toss-up. It's not, it's not wrestling, more, more or less. It's more about the entertainment aspect of it. So, the, oh man, that's, that's so sad to hear. Said the jealousy and the cattiness. Well, why is this person on TV? And why is, she can't do this and da da da. And I just was sitting there and I was just like, I'm an adult. I can't deal with this high school bullshit. And I'd be like, guys, it's okay. You know, and I'd be that locker room leader because if I didn't, 
it would just go into the negative zone and no one would be able to have any type of positivity and everyone would hate the job that we have all worked so hard to be at. Yo, I, bro. Hey, man, I will say this. Yeah. Ember Moon, yo, that is that is sad. She went through that, bro. That is so sad outside of the injuries and stuff. Like, I, I really was hoping they would really do something with her, bro. And just to see how things turned and how she was feeling, man. It was like, yo, this it's not it's not something that she loved anymore. Like, she, she wasn't loving what was happening. And that's... That's sad, bro, to be told, hey, we ain't got nothing for you, but, you know what I'm saying, you know, um, you can do some, you can be a coach or something. That sucks. For them to tell you, hey, we want this, we're going back to your old gimmick, we're making you heal, all these great things, you're getting excited just to show up and be like, nah, man, you can be a coach, though. That's kind of, I'm going to be honest with you, that's messed up, bro. That's and you can tell that still hurts her because she got so emotional. Obviously, that hurt her. That's messed up, bro. That's oh man. Once Vince got a hold of NXT and had his people take over it, it was done. It was wraps. It wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. And this is what happened to to some of the individuals, some of our you know our favorite wrestlers from the NXT Black and Gold era. That's cold, bro. I, I don't even know what to say. That's hard. That's 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 sad, man. I I really don't even know what to say <laughs> to that. I'm I'm just kind of like, yo, I'm. Oh man, damn, bro. I. <laughs> that's messed up, bro. Hey, but I, I I'm glad that she's you know, you know. I think she's doing her thing on the independent scene or whatnot. Um, so as long as she's happy in what she's doing, that's all that really matter. If if I don't if y'all don't take anything from this video, man, do not settle. If you're passionate about something and you want to go for it, go for it. But do not let anybody derail that for you. No matter how much money they throwing at you or whatever they say, do not settle. Do not settle. Keep your passion alive as long as you can. And if you can't keep it alive with whoever you're working with, keep take it somewhere else, bro. Do not settle for any reason bro because you end up hating the thing that you love so much but uh yeah man comment down below let me know man did this did this like sh this whole little interview did this kind of like hit you guys because it kind of hit me man that that was sad that was so messed up bro oh man that was truly messed up and wwe they need to do better with like taking care of the talent that gi that literally didn't give their all to them they got to do better with that because that was that was cold bloody bro but i appreciate all the love and support road to 80k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace